conclusion. I'm an astute, highly motivated and bright learner. Which is nice. Always willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Don't believe me. I'm a true liar. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Shane and I'm a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Cambridge University. And today I'm going to be reading my personal statement that got me into Cambridge University and trying to analyze it to see what I've done well, what I haven't done well, what I'd improve and what I'd keep. But yeah, let's get into it straight away. Okay, so this is how it starts. Medicine. Question mark. Are you insane? Question mark. Hard work, petrifying hours and immense pressure. So, yeah, apparently I've decided to go down the rhetorical question route. Um, it's bold. It's not something I've seen a lot in other personal statements I've read, but apparently it grabs someone's attention and it works. Trust me, we gotta move different. So, I guess, you know, when you're writing your personal statements, you can think about how you can make your first sentence attention grabbing because, you know, they are shifting through loads and loads of personal statements and it's like, la -de -la -de -la, okay, okay, fine. If you say something that's like out of the normal, then they're gonna stop and be like, okay, okay, I see, I see what he's doing. Anyway, let's read on. For me, this is a price worth paying because at the end of it all, I will know that I've improved a life. Ever since I was a child, medicine has interested me. Reading biology books kindled my interest in the body's ingenious workings and health news articles made me aware of topical issues in the medical world. I'm fascinated by how pathogens affect us, the symptoms of diseases and how they are combated. Studying medicine and ultimately becoming a doctor will feed both my scientific interests and my passion to care for others. Okay, so this is pretty much relating to the motivations, why I want to do medicine. And you know, you can kind of see that it was pretty much the reasons that most people come up with. I like medicine because I like science and knowing about the body and I like medicine because I want to help people. It's usually the one of the two, right? Or I mean, it's not one of the two, it's, it's both and you need to include both. I am the one, no way done but yeah, so you know, I've, I've done it. Pretty bog standard, um, not, I don't think it was expertly crafted. The only good thing about it, I think, is um, you know a lot of emotive, passionate words that I've used there. So I guess that was quite nice. Apart from that, everything is like pretty, you know, cliche, like, oh, ever since I was a child, I wanted to do this, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I mean, it was cliche, but it was emotive, passionate, got the point across, and apparently it worked. Anyway, let's read on. This is the second paragraph. There's no better feeling than the delight felt whilst helping others and making a difference to their lives. This was clear from day one of my four week work experience placement at two GP surgeries, Royal Derby Hospital and a pharmacy. The most poignant moment was when a patient in the neurohabilitation unit hugged and thanked each care team member for their help. Okay, that's pretty good. Like I've talked about my work experience and I've given a pretty specific example on uh, what that work experience looks like and a, and a particular a moment that I remembered. So that was nice to put that in. Now let's see if I take it further and you know analyze it. And this proved that gratitude towards doctors still exists and it's not a myth from a bygone age showing me how rewarding the job can be. Okay, so I think at that point, I think what I was trying to say was a lot of people get into medicine because they think, oh, it's gonna be high status and everyone's gonna be thankful and whatever. So I was kind of saying, I had I have a pretty realistic understanding that it might not always be like this, but I've shown that there are moments like this and it's these moments that make it worthwhile. So yeah, I think it was almost really clever actually thinking about this, like. Damn. Sometimes my genius is, it's almost frightening. That was that was smart. It was like, you know, undertones of yeah, I know, I know it's not like this always, but it's the special moments that we work for. But it's quite good. Like uh, I, I like that actually, yeah, it's not too bad. But yeah, then I move on and talk about I did six months volunteering at a nursing home and this honed my ability to care selflessly and compassionately, teaching patients and allowing me to contribute to the community in the long term. Okay, fine. Talk about volunteering, how that's a long-term thing that I've done and showed that I care about the community and wanted to give something back. So again, you know, this is building up my case for, yeah, you know, I am someone who's caring and this is my evidence and examples of stuff I've done to support it. I am so great, I am so great. But anyway, let's go on, third paragraph. Shadowing an orthopedic surgeon and observing a hip replacement made me aware of how life-changing certain procedures can be 
After speaking in depth to many doctors, I deliberated whether to pursue a career in medicine, knowing fully the pressure and demands they face. I decided that I do want to be constantly challenged, interact with people on a daily basis and make the tough decisions. Fine, okay, so this is me showing that, you know what, I know the realities. Like, I've taken time to speak to other doctors and get a sense of how difficult it's going to be. I haven't just woken up one day and decided, you know what, medicine, yeah, let's do that, let's see what happens. Um, so yeah, you know, that was a pretty nice paragraph to throw in to show that I do have an understanding of the realities. I guess I could have expanded a little bit more on the, you know, the orthopedic surgeon bit, uh, talk maybe a little bit about the surgery that I saw or a reflection on it, because, you know, a lot of the points I've made so far have been, you know, a little superficial at their level. Just mentioning a key quality and giving a brief example, but not really taking it any further. But let's see, let's see, let's read on and see what it says. So, fourth paragraph. A year spent fundraising for an expedition to Tanzania taught me determination, resolve, and good time management. Teaching core skills to Tanzanian students trained me to communicate effectively despite the language barrier. This ability will help me interact with patients and provide better care. Visiting the orphanages made me realize that our easy access to healthcare is a blessing made possible by the National Health Service. This further fueled my determination to train as a doctor and help maintain this blessing. Okay, so that was a good paragraph for me to talk about something cool that I have done that maybe not a lot of other people would have done because uh, kind of global healthcare or global any charity work at year 12 isn't super common. So yeah, it was, it was nice for me to include that. And to be honest, it was a super rewarding experience. We went out to Tanzania with uh, people from our school and we spent a year fundraising for the, you know, kind of fund the trip, but also when we are out there to help improve a school, it was super rewarding and it was really nice for me to talk about it here. But again, very superficial, like that first sentence, for example, I'm just like, determination, resolve, time management. Like, okay, but where are the specific examples to support it? It's a little bit nice in the second sentence where I do take it a bit further and I do say I, I'm able to communicate better because there was a language barrier in, uh, problem in Tanzania and I was able to get past it and that helped me communicate better and I linked it to how that's going to help me become a better doctor because that's what we want to be doing, right? Like we want to have a key quality, provide example about how we have that key quality and we now want to link that key quality to medicine and reflect on it as well. So here, okay, maybe not super deep level of reflection, but at least I've linked it to this is going to be important for when I'm a doctor. Like that was, that was pretty decent. So fifth paragraph, fitness is a key part of my life. Running daily and attending a gym keeps me relaxed, focused and disciplined, allowing me to maintain a healthy work-life balance and will help relieve the tensions and strains of studying medicine. Okay. So here I've talked about how I have interests outside the classroom, how I'm going beyond just medicine. Do you even lift? Do you go to the gym? I go to the gym, I run. Do you do cardio? You don't lift. And I show that I can maintain a good work-life balance, which I guess is a very important component um, which you're trying to convey in your personal statement as well. So let's go on to, I believe, the sixth paragraph. European Youth Parliament debating at national level has enhanced my skill of independent research, ability to extract key information and link ideas together to form the bigger picture. Skills that will aid me during the medical course. I was able to learn about pioneering scientific and medical research, their possible applications and also the ethical concerns behind them. This made me more understanding and respectful of other personal beliefs, crucial for good patient care, where you will treat people from all walks of life and disparate faiths. That was good. I've talked about a, you know, a particular example, linked it to key person specification or key qualities, and I've reflected, I've, I've shown them that this allowed me to get a bigger picture. It allowed me to look into the science, but also the ethics at the same time and consider things deeply. And I then linked it to how that's gonna help me become a better doctor. This is exactly what I'm talking about, I think, you know, in terms of how you should structure your sentences and structure your paragraphs, etc. That was good, if I do say so myself. I back that, that was, that was nice. So far, a lot of it has been superficial, but this one took it to the next level. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to say, I have completed the Youth Enterprise and Silver Duke of Edinburgh schemes and I'm the deputy head boy of my school. Oh my God. Wow. 
All this has made me an effective leader, an efficient team member, strengthened my communication skills and ability to listen and consider everyone's views. Okay, towards the end, it's sounding a bit more like a list. I'm just like listing some of the key points. I guess at some point you're gonna have to do this because you haven't got all the space in the world, right? So I, I guess because I did have that really one good part where I do take it to the next level and reflect on it properly, I feel a little bit more confident and comfortable doing this. So next paragraph. Attending multidisciplinary team meetings emphasize that teamwork is imperative in healthcare where staff members have to work together to tailor and provide the best care to patients just as organs within a system work together to carry out a role. Okay, all right, okay, I'm, I'm seeing some sort of like... Okay, like that's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that one. I've, I've used a bit of a simile. English is not really my strongest subject. Of course, well, I'm glad you said it. I've tried to link teamwork in my life with medical school life to the human body. Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you you you? Which is nice. Okay, final paragraph. In conclusion, I'm an astute, highly motivated and bright learner, always willing to go above and beyond the call of duty. My experiences have made me compassionate, empathetic and also incited an ever-growing desire to care for others. I would relish the opportunity to read medicine and rise to every challenge. Okay, so again, it's a pretty nice conclusion. It's nice only because it uses loads of emotive, passionate languages. The content of it is pretty like standard, right? This is what you would expect most people to say. Like, I want to do medicine. I'll be so grateful if I was able to do medicine and I'm compassionate. I like science, blah, blah, blah. But the fact that I use a load of emotive language, like empathetic, uh, evergreen desire, relish, rise to every child, like all of those emotive concepts and words etc i think i think they work and i guess this is what probably set my personal statement apart from maybe a lot of the other ones but yeah so this was my personal statement and if you're looking for more advice on how to actually structure your personal statement then definitely do check out this video if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to click like and smash that subscribe button but that's it from me for today and i'll see you guys next time you want him to do you so much you could do anything